In this video, we will consider how to solve several equations that have both x and y in them for y. This is useful when we're trying to solve an equation in order to put it into slope-intercept form to graph a line. Let's consider this first example. We want to solve 6x plus 3y equals 9 for y. We're going to use the steps that we have for solving an equation. This time, there are two variables in the equation. So when we talk about the variable that we're trying to get alone, that would be the variable we're trying to solve for. In this case, that's y. So we go through the steps in solving an equation. Step 1. Simplify both expressions. In this case, neither expression can be simplified. The only thing that we could possibly do would be to add 6x with 3y, but 6x and 3y are not like terms, so we can't add them together. So neither expression here can be simplified. Step 2 is to get your variable to one side of the equation, or to one expression. Our variable is y. Now I've highlighted it here in green. If it helps you, you could circle it or um, somehow make it a little bit bigger if you want to kind of go over it a couple times with your pencil to make it look bold. That way you'll know that's your variable. And you look, there's y just on one side of the equation, so therefore step two is done for us as well. Step three in solving an equation is to get your variable, in this case y, alone. Clearly, there's quite a bit going on in the left-hand expression other than just the y, so that means we have some work to do. So the first step that we have to do to get the variable alone is to get rid of all terms without your variable in it by adding the opposite. Remember that terms are things being added, and there are terms in the left-hand expression. This plus sign tells us we have things being added. This second term has the variable in it. Our y is right here. The first term, however, does not have our variable in it. So we're going to get rid of that term by adding the opposite to both expressions. So we're going to add the opposite of 6x. The opposite of 6x is written negative 6x like this. So we're going to go ahead and do that to both expressions. In the left-hand expression, 6x plus negative 6x is 0. So this term, these terms right here cancel out, which means that we have 3y in the left-hand expression equals. Here we have y plus negative 6x. Excuse, we have 9 plus negative 6x here. 9 and negative 6x are not like terms, so we cannot add them together. So I intentionally put this negative 6x not right underneath the 9 because I know I can't add them together. So I can write them right underneath. I'm going to bring this 9 term straight down plus negative 6x. Last, what we want to do, since we've gotten rid of all terms without the variable in it, now we have to get rid of the coefficient. And the step that we use is to multiply both expressions by the reciprocal of the coefficient. The coefficient of y is 3, so we're going to multiply both expressions by the reciprocal of 3, which is 1 third. We multiply both expressions by 1 third. The left-hand expression has only one term in it, so that means that this is all multiplication here. And the order of multiplication really doesn't matter, so we don't have to worry too much. Look in the right-hand expression, however. We want to multiply this entire expression by one-third. Here, there are terms. There's, there are things being added in the right-hand expression. So in order to multiply the entire expression by this one-third, we need to get that expression in parentheses so that we can distribute the one-third to the entire expression. Here, we can cancel these threes. Since they're factors, we can cancel. And we can cancel any numerator with any denominator with factors. 3 goes into itself once and into itself once. This leaves us with just y in the left-hand expression. 1 times 1 times y 
is y. And in the denominator, we just have 1 left, and we never have to write 1 in the denominator. In the right-hand expression, we distribute 1 third times 9 is 3, plus here is negative times positive. That's going to give us negative. 6x times 1 third. Now, if you're not sure how to do this, if you're not sure what that is in your, in your head right off, off the top of your head, you can write it literally. That says negative 1 third times 6x. And now we can simplify. This is going to be y equals 3 plus. This is all multiplication. 6x just means 6 times x. So we have negative 1 third times 6 times x. Here we can cancel. 3 goes into itself once and into 6 two times. Negative times positive. This is still going to be negative and it's going to be 2x. So this We've solved for y. y equals 3 plus negative 2x. This is solved for y. Now, if you're solving this for y in order to graph a line, you'll want to use the commutative property so that it's in the correct form. You want this to be in the form y equals mx plus b if you're graphing a line. So to make that happen, we just need to switch this negative 2x with the 3, which we can do because they're being added. And the commutative property of addition tells us the order of addition doesn't matter. So I can make this y equals negative 2x plus 3, which is the exact same thing as this original equation. So both of these are correct answers. If you're graphing the line, this is the form that you will want, though. Let's take another example. We'll go through this one a little bit more quickly. This is going to be 3y equals negative 5x plus 12. Going through the steps in solving an equation, step one, simplify both expressions. A quick glance at this will tell you that neither expression can be simplified. Step two, get your variable to one expression. My variable is y, and I'm only finding a y in the left-hand expression. So it's already in just one expression. Step three, get your variable alone by first getting rid of all terms without your variable in it by adding the opposite. In the expression with my variable, there are no terms to get rid of that don't have my variable in it, so there's nothing to do there. The last step is to multiply both expressions by the reciprocal of the coefficient. The coefficient does have a reciprocal, it's, or it does have a coefficient. So I multiply by its reciprocal, which will be one-third. And I need to do that to both expressions. Whenever you do this step, you always have to look to see if there are terms in either expression. And in this case, there are terms in the right-hand expression, so I have to put it in parentheses in order to distribute. Here, as usual, the 3's will cancel, leaving me with y in the left-hand expression. And I can distribute the 1 third to both terms here. Again, you can put in as many steps as you need to help you get the correct answer. What this means literally is one-third times negative 5x. And this is one-third times 12. You may be able to do that one in your head. If you can't, you can write it out just like this as well. Putting in this extra step is a good idea because it's going to really help ensure that you do get a good answer. The left-hand expression I can't do much with, but I can simplify the right-hand expression, which I should do. Here I'm multiplying fractions. I have a fraction times an expression that's not really a fraction right now. But I can multiply them. I can't cancel anything here. And if I'm going to multiply with fractions, I should write everything as a fraction by putting it over 1, and then multiply numerator by numerator, and denominator by denominator. Here we go. This is 1 times negative 5x. I have a positive times a negative. That's going to be negative. 1 times 5 is 5 times x is x. In the denominator, 3 times 1 is 3. I'm going to add to that. Here I'm multiplying fractions again. And here I'm noticing I can cancel because 3 goes into itself once and into 12 four times. So this is going to leave me with just 4 over 1 
or 4. This is solved for y. Again, we can put this in slope-intercept form. If we're trying to graph a line, we want it to look like this. We want x to have a coefficient. The problem here is that x is involved in this fraction. It's part of the numerator. So we want to use a strategy that we've previously learned in order to get that x out of the fraction. y equals, and we can think of this as the opposite of multiplying fractions, I guess undoing multiplying fractions. Because we know that when we multiply fractions, we had to multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. So if we want to get rid of this negative 5 times x and just have the negative 5 in the fraction, couldn't we have had an x being multiplied outside of the fraction? So that it's negative 5 thirds times x? and then we have to add this plus 4. Now the coefficient, or which will translate to be the slope, will be negative 5 thirds, and then we multiply that by x. This is an equivalent way of writing that expression that is the same as this. Both of these are correct solutions. One of them is easier to use when you're solving in order to graph.